Here's a video to introduce an example of how complex numbers might appear in science via quadratic equations. In a drag-free world, so that acceleration is always vertical and equal to g, we launch an object from the top of a 50 meter high cliff at 20 meters per second, 30 degrees above the horizontal. The question is, after how much time does it hit the ground? And to frame that mathematically, it means at what time is its vertical displacement minus 50 meters? The initial velocity u has horizontal and vertical components which can be found using the cosine and sine, respectively, of the angle theta. We can use this uniform acceleration formula for both directions. It's particularly easy horizontally, as there's no acceleration in this direction, and it reduces to distance equals speed times time. The vertical version includes a half gt squared term for the extra displacement due to the acceleration from gravity. If we use the vertical version and substitute in values y equals minus 50 meters, u equals 20 meters per second, theta equals 30 degrees, and g equals minus 10 meters per second squared, rather than 9.81 just because we want to keep the numbers easy, we end up with this, which simplifies to this. We can collect all the terms on the same side, and then divide throughout by 5 to give us this quadratic equation to solve. It's a specific example of the general quadratic equation shown here in grey, where a, b and c are the coefficients of the terms in the equation. Its solution can be found using the quadratic formula. All we need to do is substitute into the formula the values a equals 1, b equals negative 2, and c equals negative 10. Here it is. The bit inside the square root is 4, minus 2 squared is 4, minus negative 40, which is 44. And so here we have the solutions for t. There are two solutions, 4.43 seconds and negative 2.32 seconds. The 4.43 seconds solution tells us the time after launch that the object hits the floor, and that is the answer to our question. The other solution still has a physical meaning though. If you ran the videotape of the motion backwards and somehow removed the cliff, it would hit an altitude of minus 50 meters, 2.23 seconds after passing through the starting point. Now let's ask a different question. At what time does the ball reach an altitude of 50 meters from the starting point? We set the problem up the same, the only difference is that we use a value of 50 meters for y instead of minus 50 meters. We follow the same steps and arrive at a similar, but not identical, quadratic equation. This time c equals 10 rather than negative 10. And this makes all the difference in the world because the square root now contains 4 minus 40 or negative 36. To solve this equation requires the square root of negative 36. A number that when multiplied by itself gives negative 36. And there is no such real number, because all real squares are positive. This lack of a real solution has a physical meaning too. There never was a time at which the object was 50 meters above its starting point, because its initial velocity was too small to allow it to reach that height. So far, so good. But later we'll see that there are solutions to this equation. It's just that the solutions are not real numbers.